Hello and welcome back to the Air Armoury, I'm JRH and today I'm looking at and comparing different types of loading mechanisms for underlever air rifles. This is the first video in a series I have planned looking at and comparing certain features of air guns and other ones coming up uh, include repeating mechanisms and bolt actions. With brake barrel air guns, apart from the very odd exception, there is just one standard method of loading the gun. You break the barrel open, insert the pellet into the back or the breech end of the barrel and then close it up. But with underlevers, there's slightly more variety with regard to the loading mechanisms, uh, some more established than others. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you some different examples, explain how they work, and then run through the main advantages and disadvantages of each. I'm dividing them into five categories, which will be sliding breech, loading tap, bolt action, tilting barrel, and lifting breech block. Now there may be some other more obscure ones, but those are the main ones that I have knowledge of. Now I should point out that things might look a bit different from scene to scene, as this video has been filmed at several different points depending on when I've had access to guns and when I've had certain guns out. So let's take a closer look at some underlever loading mechanisms. The most common system is to have a breech cover which slides back when you cock the gun, thus giving you access to load the pellet directly into the back of the barrel, as on the Air Arms TX200 Mark III here. Um, the main advantage of this system is that the pellet is going directly into a fixed barrel, so there's no risk of movement of parts or damage to the pellet whilst feeding, uh, both of which can adversely affect accuracy. And the other advantage of this is it allows you direct access to both ends of the barrel um, to assist with cleaning and maintenance. Now the one potential downside of this system, which isn't so much of a problem on modern guns, is safety. So to load a pellet, you are essentially having to put your fingers uh, into the gun in front of the piston with all that spring pressure behind it. Now this risk is largely averted if there's an anti-bear trap safety, um, like on the Air Arms gun here. So when the gun is cocked, the breech cover slides back and locks in place um, on this spring-loaded catch. So even if the sear fails, everything is prevented from sliding forwards unless you press this catch to release the cover and return the cocking lever. This used to be more of an issue than it is now, as some older guns and even actually some newer cheap Chinese guns don't have anti-bear trap safety mechanisms, such as this BAM rifle here. As you can see, there's no catch to hold that sliding breech back. And on rifles like that, if the sear fails and you're still loading the pellet, you can say goodbye to your fingers. Now I should stress that this is very unlikely to happen, but it's not unheard of. So whilst you shouldn't worry about it, you should at least be aware of it. Um, for safety reasons, whether your gun has an anti-bear trap or not, it's best practice to keep a firm hold of the cocking lever the whole time you're cocking the gun. So here I have the Air Arms TX200 Mark III. To load it, I'm going to unclip the cocking lever. <coughs> Bring that back, which opens the sliding breech. I'm going to put a pellet directly into the end of the barrel, the whole time keeping a firm hold of the cocking lever. And then going to press the anti-bear trap safety in to bring the lever back forwards and then it's ready to fire. I then have that BAM under lever. So again, need to release the under lever, pull it back and this time making a definite sure I've got firm hold as there is no anti-bear trap the pellet to the end of the barrel and then nothing to press in to return the lever so I just bring it forwards, clip it in, ready to fire. The next category and probably the second most common is tap loading as on this Anschutz Hakim military training rifle. 
So on these guns there is what's called a loading tap. So this lever here is connected to a rotary mechanism in the gun behind the barrel. And to load the gun you flip the tap up, which opens this port. You then drop your pellet in nose first and push the lever closed and that rotates the pellet in line with the back of the barrel. Now the main benefit of this system is safety. You're not putting your fingers anywhere they have the potential to get mangled no matter how slight you deem that risk to be. And another benefit is that it doesn't limit the design of the main cylinder um, as you don't have to factor in cutting a large hole out of it which isn't practical on all guns. So downsized tap loaders are that although it has the all-important fixed barrel for accuracy when the pellet is fired it has to transfer between the um, rotating tap and the barrel which can impact on accuracy especially if things aren't lined up 100% and if the pellet isn't seated in the tap quite right you could damage the skirt when you rotate it into position. Um, there are also more moving parts so there are more things that can go wrong and you don't have easy access to the rear of the barrel which can hamper cleaning or if you ever had a blockage or anything like that. So you cock the gun using the under lever and then return the lever up again. Now on this gun uh, cocking it automatically flicks the tap up but on a lot of them it will stay closed and you then need to manually open the tap. You then drop your pellet head first into the loading port and then close the lever to close the tap and rotate the pellet in line with the barrel. Whilst this isn't a common method, I can think of a couple of different guns which use a bolt action system for loading a pellet in an underlever air rifle and despite both being bolt action they actually operate quite differently to each other. The first is the Sterling HR81 and HR83 rifles, uh, originally made by the Sterling Armament Company in the UK, but later by Benjamin in the US. Now, unfortunately, I don't own one, but I do have a picture here from an old air gun magazine. And as you can see from the picture, it has a relatively typical looking bolt handle on the side towards the rear of the gun, and then a separate cutout in the breech to allow you to load a pellet. Now advantages of this system are that the bolt pushes the pellet straight into the rear of the fixed barrel um, so it helps with accuracy and it's very safe and I think it's just a really cool system as I'm a big fan of bolt action guns. It does have its disadvantages though, uh, it makes the gun inherently more complicated and leading on from that like with most bolt action guns you need a separate kind of receiver tube uh, for the bolt to run in and there isn't room to incorporate one in line with the main spring in the main cylinder so it has to be above and because of that um, it adds weight with the Sterling rifles weighing around eight and a half pounds or 3.85 kilograms. The other bolt action under lever I can think of is the Hatsan torpedo. Now I don't actually have one of those either but you can see a picture of one here in the air gun world buyer's guide. Now with the torpedo as I understand it, uh, the barrel is essentially free floating in a barrel sleeve and it's actually the barrel which acts as the bolt. So you slide the barrel forward to load a pellet into the rear and then pull the barrel back and lock it into place using a small bolt handle on the um, barrel itself. Now whilst this bolt action doesn't have the same weight implications of the Sterling rifles, it doesn't have the fixed barrel um, which undermines some of the accuracy potential of an underlever over a brake barrel. Another much less common loading method is having a tilting barrel, such as on this original Bugelspanner. So although this is an underlever, albeit the cocking lever is the trigger guard rather than a conventional lever underneath the barrel, it actually loads more like a brake barrel gun. So if I push this catch on the side of the forend, it releases the barrel which drops down just far enough to give me access to load a pellet into the back of the barrel uh, but unlike a brake barrel gun the barrel won't go down any further than this and there's no spring pressure on it because it is not the barrel that's compressing the main spring so once it's loaded you then just snap the barrel back into place the advantages of this are that you load directly into the barrel so you don't have to worry about any potential issues with the pellet getting from a tap and into the barrel and you don't have to put your fingers in harm's way to do so uh, but this system is let down by the fact that it's not a fixed barrel so there is the potential for barrel movement which kind of undermines one of the main benefits of an underlever really. 
Okay, I've got the original bugle spanner here. So to load the gun, you cock it using the underlever. This of course being the extended trigger guard rather than the conventional underlever under the barrel. Close it up and then to load the pellet, operate the catch on the side of the forend, which drops the barrel down. I can then insert the pellet into the breech of the barrel, snap it back into place and then it's ready to fire. The last category I can think of is where the gun has a separate breech block behind the barrel which lifts up to allow you to load a pellet. And the two guns I can think of which utilise this mechanism were the Walther LGR and the Webley Eclipse. Now I don't have either of those, but if we look at Christopher Thrale's excellent book, Webley Air Rifles 1925-2005, to uh, you can see a good picture of it on the Eclipse. Now this is quite a clever system, as it's similar to the loading tap, sharing its advantages of fixed barrel and safety, but with the added benefit of the pellet loading straight into the barrel. Uh, disadvantages though are that it, the air has to travel further from the main cylinder and through additional seals before it gets to the pellet, which called, uh, could cause a reduction in power. And as this is quite a complicated system, it probably would have been harder and more expensive to make. So there you've seen most, or at least the main different systems for loading an underlever air rifle. Now I don't think you could say that there's one mechanism that is definitively better than all of the others in every aspect, but purely in terms of accuracy I think you'd probably have to favour the sliding breech with the fixed barrel and direct loading. Um, that system also has the benefit of being a tried and tested design with mainstream accessibility being used on dozens of rifles. Now I love bolt action guns, but I haven't actually had the chance to try a Sterling HR81 or HR83 for myself. So for me personally, I think I favour a nice smooth tap loading system. And the best one I've come across is probably on the original Model 50, which you can see a clip of here. It's a nice metal lever, it's very smooth, and you might be able to hear it clicking as it opens and closes. And that's because the uh, lever runs against a spring-loaded ball bearing to allow it to clip into place when it's open and closed. So, thanks for watching. I hope you found the video interesting. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe to the Air Armoury. And until next time, keep your arms in the air.